Welcome back to the lead in the politics lead now. I cannot stand to even look at you. No, not you, dear viewer. Never <laughs> you. But that quote is what's being peddled around town this week as a verbatim insult supposedly hurled by one Republican House leader at the President of the United States in the midst of the heated debate over the debt ceiling at the White House. Democratic Senator Dick Durbin made waves by posting the comment on his Facebook page and asking incredulously, what are the chances of an honest conversation with someone who has just said something so disrespectful, which would be a fair point if it were true that that comment had been made. But the White House now says that that exchange never happened. The quote attributed to the lawmaker uh, was not accurate, but uh, there was a miscommunication uh, in the readout of uh, that meeting uh, between the White House and, and Senate uh, Democrats. So then who started this weird game of Washington telephone? Let's bring in our political panel. Former Virginia congressman and former chair for the National Republican Congressional Committee, Tom Davis. CNN chief political analyst, Gloria Borger. And former Democratic congressman from Texas, Martin Frost. I should mention you were also the head of the Democratic Congressional Campaign Correct. Committee. I don't Different wanna, times. Not, I didn't but go, I didn't don't want to take away your Tom. title when I gave it to him. So a source tells me, or sources tell me, that the deputy chief of staff, Rob Neighbors, told the story about this congressman who he identified as Congressman Sessions of Texas. Uh, he told it to the Senate Democratic leaders. Right. Then Harry Reid went into the Senate Democratic caucus and proceeded to tell 55 or whatever Democrats the story. And then uh, Dick Durbin posted it on his Facebook page. Then the, White House, denied, then the White House denied that it ever happened. I know, this is high school. <laughs> these, these people are in the middle of a huge fight. The president had to meet with the Democrats and the Republicans separately. This is during the shutdown. And so then after he met with the Republicans, somebody's in that meeting, passes along a comment that was not said, now we believe, and someone posted on his Facebook page, only he happens to be a ranking Democrat in the Senate. It's kind of crazy, on but it just Facebook shows page. you how these guys don't trust each other, and they don't like each other, and they don't talk to each other. And, and Congressman Davis, you said something very interesting when we were discussing this earlier. Um, who knows what happens? It doesn't sound like something. You know Congressman Sessions, and you it don't think... It doesn't sound it, like anything you would say to the president. But you also say that even if it had happened, it's obligatory that the White House would deny it. Absolutely. Look, there's nobody's interest, but you have no corroboration with it now, so you best put it in the dustbin. But remember this. This is a town where you can get up and yell, you lie, at a State of the Union and raise a million dollars online the next week. It's still a poisonous atmosphere. I think that underlines all of this. So let's turn on to, to uh, well, I'm, I'm going to exempt Congressman Frost since he and uh, Congressman Sessions ran against each other. I'm, I'm sure you have nothing but wonderful things to say about him. We'll move on no, no comment. <laughs> to, like to Maryland Attorney General uh, Doug Gansler, who uh, is in a little bit of trouble. He's running for governor. He, uh, he wound up at a high school party at the beach in Delaware in June. He apparently stopped by to talk to his teenage son. Somebody snapped a photo. It was posted on Instagram. Gansler said it's not his job to break up a party of underage drinkers, though in the past uh, he has done public service announcements on the dangers of teen drinking. Parents, you're the leading influence on your teen's decision not to drink. It's never too early to talk Now that's a little bit different from what he said today at his press conference. If you look at the picture, they're not, not right where I was, but there are some kids, one or two kids, having, holding red cups, and generally, you know, there could be Kool-Aid in the red cups, but there's probably beer in the red cups. That wasn't, you know, I didn't go over and stick my nose in and see, and maybe I should have. Oh, wait. Yeah. Congressman Frost, he's in the middle of a primary. Uh, this is not going to help. No, this is not helpful at all. And uh, when I was in Congress, and I won't mention which of my three daughters, because I have three, one of my three daughters had a party at our house while my wife and I were out of town. And we came back and we saw the remnants of the party, and it obviously had been involved drinking. That daughter was in a world of hurt for a long period of time. You know, but, but he's a law enforcement official. Yeah. I mean, he's, he's just, it, as a mother, I would have gone in, said to my son, you have two minutes to meet me outside, and we're, we're going, okay? Or or I'll make a scene. Take your pick. There were parents there, apparently, chaperoning this. So as a law enforcement official, isn't it your responsibility to talk 
to those parents and say, I'm giving you 15 minutes before I call the cops? Although I, he's, I, he's, he's the Attorney General of Maryland, and this apparently was taking place in but he, Delaware. He, oh, 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 so it's Bo me. Biden's fault. Well, oh, right. The drinking <laughs> age is 21. Right. right. Not 18. But, this has been a terrible rollout for his campaign. He paid a speeding ticket belatedly last week. Uh, he's got to get some grounding pretty quickly or this campaign's going to dissolve. I mean, when you did that uh, with your daughter, were you at all, you were a member of Congress at yeah, the time? Member of Congress. How much does it go into your head when you're a member of Congress and you have a child who does something like that that is clearly against the law? That it, it this has nothing th to do with my being a member of Congress and everything to do with being a parent. And in fact, uh, we called some of the other parents after the fact to let them know what had gone on. I mean, you, you have to take a firm position with your kids. You can't tolerate this. And if his, his, he'll be explaining this for months now. I don't wish him any ill. He's a good public servant, but this is a real problem. So I, I, we only have uh, about a minute left in this eclectic uh, mix of stories, and I want to go to Hillary Clinton, who was um, heckled at a speech yeah. uh, Wednesday in Buffalo, New York. We have to be willing to come together as citizens to focus on the kind of future we want, which doesn't include yelling. It includes sitting down and talking with one another. So she, she handled the heckler like a pro. Um, but Benghazi is a story that's not going away for her. No, Benghazi is a story that's not going away. She's going to continue to have hecklers. She's going to continue to have to discuss her foreign policy experience and her role as Secretary of State. In this particular incident, I think she handled it well, particularly as a woman. A part of her shtick, I think, is going to be, I can get people together to talk, because that's what women do. That's what women in the Senate said they did last week, remember? Have you guys ever been heckled like that? Oh, many times at town meetings. Uh, but it goes with the territory. But she's a pro. She handled yeah. it well. But Benghazi is not going away. The Congress isn't going to let it go away. But there'll be, uh, there'll be other hecklers for other candidates, too, not just her. But she is a consummate professional. Uh, she can handle something like that. All right, Congressman Frost, Congressman Davis, Gloria Boyd.